Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to begin our discussion on the physical and chemical control of microbes. By the end of this video, you should be able to distinguish among the terms sterilization, disinfection, antisepsis, and decontamination. Identify the types of microorganisms that are most resistant and least resistant to control measures. Compare the action of microcidal and microstatic agents, providing an example of each. Name four categories of cellular targets for physical and chemical agents. Throughout history, humans have been trying to control microbial growth, sometimes without knowing they were doing it, through methods such as salting food, smoking food, pickling food, drying food, exposing food, clothing, and bedding to sunlight, burning clothing and corpses, and storing water in copper and silver containers. Possible outcomes for microbial control include sterilization, which is the destruction of all microbial life, or disinfection, which destroys most microbial life, reducing contamination on inanimate surfaces. Antisepsis, also called degermination, is the same as disinfection, but it's on a living surface. Or decontamination, also called sanitation, which is the mechanical removal of most microbes from an animate or inanimate surface. Okay, so some more details. Disinfection is on an inanimate surface, and it reduces or destroys microbial lobe of an inanimate item through application of heat or antimicrobial chemicals. Common application is cleaning surfaces like laboratory benches, clinical surfaces, and bathrooms. Things we can use to do this are things such as chlorine bleach, phenols like Lysol, or glutaraldehyde. Next, we have sanitation, which is also called decontamination. This reduces microbial lobe of an inanimate item to safe public health levels through application of heat or antimicrobial chemicals. Communication is commercial dishwashing of eating utensils and cleaning of public restrooms. Common agents are detergents containing phosphates, industrial strength cleaners containing coordinary ammonium compounds. Finally, for inanimates, we have sterilization, which completely eliminates all vegetative cells, endospores, and viruses from an inanimate item. Common application is preparation of surgical equipment and of needles used for injection. Common agents is pressurized steam, using a device called an autoclave, chemicals, and radiation. Now, for use on living tissues, we have antisepsis, which reduces microbial load on skin or tissue through application of antimicrobial chemicals. Common application, cleaning skin broken due to injury, cleaning skin before surgery. Common agents are things such as boric acid, isopropyl alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, or iodine. Or we have degerming, which again reduces microbial load on skin or tissue through gentle to firm scrubbing and the use of mild chemicals. Common application is hand washing, Common agents are soap or alcohol swab. The primary targets of microbial control are microorganisms capable of causing infection or spoilage, constantly present in the external environment and on the human body, and often contains mixtures of microbes. Bacterial endospores are considered the most resistant microbial entities. Destruction of endospores is the goal of sterilization. Any process that will kill endospores will invariably kill less resistant microbial forms. Other methods of control, like disinfection or antisepsis, act on microbes that are less hardy than endospores. So if we compare endospores to vegetative cells, we can see that methods, for example, moist heat, you require 120 degrees Celsius to kill endospores, while only 80 degrees to kill the vegetative cells. Similarly, you require a higher dose of radiation you require more sterilizing gas, or you require more of a sporocidal liquid, longer time exposure, um, to kill the endospores versus the vegetative cells. So the endospores are much more resistant to these treatments than the vegetative cells are. Sterilization is a process that destroys or removes all viable microorganisms, including viruses. Any material that has been subjected to this process is said to be sterile. Sterilized products are essential to human well-being, for example, surgical instruments, syringes, and commercially packaged foods. Disinfection, the use of physical process or a chemical agent disinfectant to destroy vegetative pathogens but not bacterial endospores. Disinfectants are normally only used on inanimate objects. 
Antisepsis. So sepsis is a growth of microorganisms in blood or other tissues. Asepsis is any practice that prevents the entry of infectious agents into sterile tissues and prevents infection. Aseptic techniques include sterile methods that exclude all microbes. Antisepsis is application of a chemical agent, antiseptics, to expose body surfaces, wounds, and surgical incisions to destroy or inhibit vegetative pathogens. Cytal agents, germicide and microbicide, are chemical agents that kill microorganisms. Bactericide is a chemical that destroys bacteria except for those in the endospore stage. Fungicide kills fungal spores, hyphae, and yeast. Viricide inactivates viruses, especially on living tissues. And sporicide is capable of killing endospores. Static agents. Microbes are prevented from multiplying but are not killed. Bacteriostatic agents prevent the growth of bacteria on tissues or objects in the environment. Fungostatic chemicals inhibit fungal growth. Microbostatic agents, chemicals used to control microorganisms in the body, antisepsis and drugs. Decontamination, also called sanitation, any cleansing technique that mechanically removes microbes and debris, reduces contamination to safe levels, and a sanitizer is a soap or detergent used to sanitize. Decontamination, antisepsis, and degermination, reduction of the number of microbes on the skin, involves scrubbing the skin or immersing it in chemicals or both. Emulsifies oils on the outer cutaneous layer, mechanically removes potential pathogens on the outer layers of the skin. Practical concerns in microbial control. Does the item in question require sterilization or is disinfection adequate? Is the item to be reused or permanently discarded? If it will be reused, can the item withstand heat, pressure, radiation, or chemicals? Is the control method suitable for a given application? Will the agent penetrate to the necessary extent? Is the method cost and labor efficient, and is it safe? Microbial control on medical devices. Well, we have critical medical devices. These are expected to come into contact with sterile tissues. Semi-critical medical devices. These come into contact with mucosal membranes. And non-critical medical devices. Those that do not touch the patient or are only expected to touch intact skin. Now, the death of microorganisms is harder to detect than in macroscopic organisms. There's no conspicuous vital signs to measure for a bacteria. Lethal agents do not alter or avert the appearance of most microbial cells. Loss of movement cannot be used to indicate death. And special qualifications are needed to define and delineate microbial death. Factors that affect death rate is the number of microorganisms, the nature of microbes in the population, type of microbial growth, temperature and pH of the environment, concentration of the agent, mode of action of the agent, presence of solvents, interfering organic matter, and inhibitors. Cellular targets of physical and chemical antimicrobial agents include the cell wall, the cell or cytoplasmic membrane, cellular synthetic processes, so DNA and RNA, and proteins. Effects of agents on the cell wall. Damage to the cell wall, blocking cell synthesis, digesting the cell wall, or breaking down the surfaces of the cell wall. A cell with a damaged cell wall is fragile and becomes lysed easily. Detergents and alcohols disrupt the cell wall. How agents affect the cell membrane? The cell membrane and viral envelope are composed of lipids and proteins. Disruption of the cell membrane causes loss of selective permeability, loss of vital molecules, and allows the entry of damaging chemicals. Surfacants are polar molecules with hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. They physically bind to the lipid layer and penetrate the internal hydrophobic region of membranes. This opens up leaky spots that allow damaging chemicals to seep into the cell and important ions to leak out. So the membrane is typically a phospholipid bilayer. When surfacants are added, the surfacants have hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions, so they integrate into the membrane, creating openings where things can get into or out of the cell. Agents that affect protein and nucleic acid synthesis. Microbial cells depend on an orderly and continuous supply of proteins. Substances that inhibit ribosomes will also inhibit protein synthesis. Nucleic acids are necessary for the continued function of microbes. Agents that impede the transcription of DNA replication or DNA transcription or changes the genetic code is antimicrobial. Protein states affect function. The native state is a normal three-dimensional configuration of a protein that allows proper function. If you denature a protein, this is a disruption of a protein rendering them non-functional. It's breaking the bonds that maintain the secondary and tertiary structures. 
So if you denature a protein and it loses its shape, without the proper shape, the protein can't function. Agents that alter protein function, denaturation of proteins, moist heat, irreversible solidification of an egg white when boiled is an example, strong organic solvents, alcohols and acids, and phenolytics. Other effects on proteins, metallic ions bind to the actocyte, preventing it from interacting with its substrate. All right, this has been your introduction to physical and chemical control of microbes. Until next time, this is Dr. Sage.